Okay, boys and girls, something brand new for you tonight that I've never done. I have gotten a lot of requests on how to cast dice, which kind of caught me off guard because I'm not a dice game playing guy. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, regular dice, I suppose people want to customize them. Um, I think it's fascinating. I've never done it before, but I'm going to go ahead and try it tonight. That's my first attempt. Um, I watched a video tonight on YouTube of a guy doing it. And uh, in my experience of casting, resin casting, and mold making, the way he did it was mega expensive. I mean, like mega expensive. His, and I'm not going to say who it was because I don't want to badmouth the guy. But when I was watching it as a viewer, I was thinking, oh my God, I can do this so much cheaper. And apparently from the emails and stuff I've gotten, there are a lot of people out there that want to do it cheaper. So let's give it a try tonight and see what happens. Well, this might take a day or two to complete. But uh, just like my last video, um, we're going to start. And if it works, well, my saying, if you didn't watch the last video, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. But either way, I'm going to post it. So hopefully it'll work. But I'm willing to give it a try. I'm just going to use standard dice tonight. I have some Yachty dice here that I stole from my my wife's uh, Yachty game. Hopefully we don't ruin them because she'll get mad at me. <laughs> uh, do the old familiar shrinky dink thing. Got to shrink myself down. I think it might have to be my trademark where, you know, I, I there is no button to shrink it down that I can find. So what I got here in front of us, I've, I've got some Yahtzee dice here. Just standard square dice, one to six. Um, I'm only gonna. I, got, I dug up four cups that I'm gonna make molds out of. You see, they're right here. Those. Whoop. Yeah, just put those anywhere, Bruce. They are smaller cups than I normally use. I guess the cup doesn't really matter, um, as long as, like I like to say, as long as it's not wax coated. Uh, I am using clear resin tonight, which I love using clear resin. But right now we're going to mold these, and I have to figure out how to make the mold how to design the mold and like i said you know everything flows up so we make the mold upside down so here's my first die and i'm going to use tonight something different i'm going to use a straw to uh as a vent as a well i don't think i have to vent this but i do need a pouring hole so we're going to use this standard drinking straw for my pouring hole now i gotta find my cigarette or not my cigarette yeah guess what i'm thinking about I'm going to find my scissors, and I'm going to cut about, that's about a little more than an inch off. might be too long. <laughs> and now I'm going to look at my dice, because what I think I'm going to do, the mold's going to sit in, yeah, this direction. And we're going to pour through the top of the straw to fill the mold. So I want to make sure this straw doesn't interfere with any of these dots. See, if I put it there, it's going to mess up those dots, and they're not going to come out right. So I have to find a corner where there's room because I can dremel off any extra. Okay, here, this will work. Right here, it's between a one, two, and three. And I think if you can look, I'll, I'll try to rotate it. If you can look, that straw is not going to interfere with any of the, yeah, it's not going to interfere with any numbers. So I'm going to try and go with that. So let's put a little piece of hot glue on, on my straw here. Okay, this is low temperature hot glue. I always use low temperature hot glue with anything plastic because I don't want it melting my original. Okay, see I'm sticking that to the corner and we have to wait for that to dry. La 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 la. I'm probably going to have to skip through this drying because I got four of them to do. I'm going to videotape the entire thing and edit it later. So that should be interesting too. So there's one. We'll set that there. Let's do the second one. I'm going to cut these straws now. I made them about a little longer than an inch. We can always change the length when we compare it to the cup. But for now, that's what I'm going to do. And I need four of them. And like I said, for me, I chose to do one, two, and three on that corner where the straw won't interfere with the dots because the dots are actually going to come out in the cast. So we take our hot glue again. This process will take a while. Now that I think about it, I will probably skip through a lot of it. But this is going to be my fill hole and my vent hole in this case. Which is why I'm using a straw, because it's a little bit bigger. 
than the dowel rods I normally use, but I think it's going to work just fine. And like I said, you can get a whole big pack of straws at the dollar store. Hell, you can get a bag of dice at the dollar store, so I don't even know why we're doing this. But this is for people that want to make the Dungeons & Dragons dice. I'm hoping maybe this technique might work. If it doesn't, I'm still going to show you guys. So there's two that I've done. Let's see what the depth would be when I stick this in the cup. If I put this in the cup like this, that's going to be pretty deep. It's going to be pretty deep. I can actually take some, some off of this pour hole. I don't need it that big. So I'm going to take about half off, which is leaving me with about three quarters of an inch. Now, I am going to use my reusable molding compound that I showed you how to do in a previous video. So that's the good part about it. If you screw it all up, it doesn't matter. You can just remelt it and try again. We're going to try it this way. So I got my hot glue in the bottom there right in the center of my cup and ooh, my fingers don't want to fit down there hopefully you don't have this problem and i'm going to hold that till that dries this is going to take a while so i definitely skip forward you all can't see what i'm doing now you can't see the through the cup either i'm used to using the clear cups you can see through but anyway i'm waiting for that hot glue to dry and I'm definitely going to skip through the rest of these because it's going to make the video way too long. Da, da, da. I'm waiting for it to get cooler so I know I can leave it go. I am going to leave my mistakes in here, though, so you can follow around. Maybe you'll learn from what I mess up. Could blow in there a little bit, cool, cool it off. And, okay, well, you can see what I did here. You see the dice down in there? It's on that, uh, uh, turn it the right way. It's standing up on that straw because that's where we're going to pour it from. Remember, all these molds come out upside down. So when you fill it, you're actually going to pour in here. Your resin is going to go down to the bottom here and come up. And hopefully, hopefully no air bubbles. Like I said, I'm kind of excited to see how this happens. So let me, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and stop right now and I'm going to do the other three and I'll be right back, which you won't know the difference because you'll still be here. Hold on. Okay. I cut a, I cut a, I cut that all out because it took a long time, but what I did and um, I got my four done that we're going to mold tonight, but I, I found a clear cup that I wanted to show you how I, how it is to see if you can work out the physics of it. Uh, as you can see, there's a die right there. Um, and there's the straw on the bottom. Now, do you see the way I have that position? Always thinking about air. I made the highest point to where the straw connects to it because we're going to pour it like this. So we're pouring in here and it's going to fill up that die and that's even going to leave a little reservoir up here. We're going to fill that all the way to the top. When it dries, we're going to take a Dremel tool and remove any excess that's on there. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video because we're doing this end to end. But I just wanted to show you exactly because you can't see so well in, in these four. These four we're going to pour. I'm going to try to pour this too, but I don't think this, I don't think this cup's going to handle it. So, but uh, who knows? Maybe it will. So we'll try all five, but this one might be a fail. But uh, you see how I did it. Um, you know, I, I used that point between the one, two, and three, which you can see right there. That way the, uh, the spout doesn't mess up any of the dots that have to stay there. And I'm going to show you how to get rid of the excess on there where you won't even notice it. So now it's time to pour our molding compound. This is the reusable molding compound that I made a video about before. Uh, highly recommend it. It's only for clear resin, which is what we're going to use today. And I'm just going to pour that in there very slowly and let it fill up above the die. And that should be plenty right there. There's one. There's two. Um, I do what's called a high pour. If you lift it up like this, it's supposed to get out the air bubbles. It actually does because I've done this a couple different ways. There's two. Here comes number three. Just right on top of it. Now, the guy whose video I just watched 
he was using one of the uh, the smooth on or no, I'm sorry, not smooth on the Umu products, which they are great. That's great molding compound. It really is. But once you pour it and it dries, you're done. You can't reuse it. And it's like $30, $30 a set, which is a lot of money, especially if you're going to make a mistake. Um, that's why I like using this reusable molding compound. If I, may, if I make a mistake or one of these molds gets messed up, it's okay. I just remelt it and use it again. Uh, someone actually emailed me and told me it's the same as ballistic gel that they used on Mythbusters. I guess I can see that. I guess I can see the similarities. Um, it, it's just such a good tool to have in your arsenal, especially if you're using clear mold or I'm sorry, clear resin. I got to fill up our test one here though. This one, I really don't think this is going to work, but like I said, I'm going to finish this video pass or fail and we'll see at the end if this actually works. So there, I've got all five dice in my molding compound. We're going to let those dry. And I come back to it. We're going to demold them and we're going to pour them. I might add a little color to it and see what we get. A little imagination. I don't really have a use for any dice right now. I'm just doing this to show you guys. And also to learn myself. So you're going to learn with me tonight. And I think that's really interesting. Um, I'm looking for air bubbles. It doesn't seem to have a lot of air bubbles. Um, we're going to see. We are going to see what happens. So I'm going to take a break, and as soon as these solidify, we'll demold them, and I'll show you how to pour them, how to cut them out, and how to pour them. Like I said, on this one, you're learning just the same way I am. So I think it's interesting. See you in a bit. Okay, it's been a couple hours, and I just I put these in a refrigerator to cool off so we could uh, keep moving. Um, seem to come out pretty good, nice and firm. Uh, doesn't seem to be a lot of air bubbles in there. I don't know if you can see on this one, like when this when this resin was brand new, it would, uh, that looks like an air bubble. That's actually a fingerprint on top there. Um, when this was new, you could see through it a lot better. I've used this, maybe this particular batch, six or seven times. And you can see as using it, it picks up some dirt and it's not as clear as it was when we first made it. You can still see through it. Now it's got condensation from the refrigerator. You can still see through it, but you'll see there's little particles of dirt in there. Now, what I like to do, um, and yeah, I'm going to do it. I haven't done it yet, and I'm not going to put it in this video. It's pretty self-explanatory. I like to heat the resin up and pour it through a fine strainer to get some of the, because sometimes you'll get resin chunks in there. You'll get dirt, and it prolongs the life of your reusable uh, molding compound. So just a little tip there. So these are ready to cut open, and I'll cut one open on camera, then I'll do the rest to save us some time. Um... You know, you could just tear them off. I like to just make little little notches there and then tear from them. It's, um, I don't like these clear cups very much. I didn't think this mold was going to come out. I thought it was going to, all right, <laughs> um, it's still not come out. It's hard to tear this kind of material. That's why I prefer using the solo cups. I'm having a hard time tearing it. Uh, I'm going to take this off camera for a second. There it goes. There it goes. Just, you know, remove the cup, the outside cup for the mold. That's garbage. And here we go. We got our mold there. Uh, you can see it come out nice size. This is going to be my pour hole. And now cutting it, what I want to do, if you can see the dice in there, I want to cut it on one side right down the edge. Of the die so I don't have a really big seam to work with when I'm done so I'm looking at the top here and I think I see what I want I'm gonna go right down that straw make a sideways cut to the edge that's how I always start it spread it open and then I like to just take my time I wish I had a sharper knife I might have to get another knife but I just want to get in there and touch that dice right on its corner and go right down the edge. That'll be a lot easier to clean up when we're done. I'm sure my fat fingers are getting in the way, so I'm trying to explain it. Da, 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 da. Okay, so I'm going right down the edge of that die. And we, you know, don't cut it the whole way down to the bottom. So I got right down the edge of that die. Now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can only make one cut. The, le the least amount of cuts you make to these, the better. Nope, you won't have to, there, oh, well, okay, 
that's my spell. That's okay. That can wait. Now I gotta get in here and get the die out. Uh, come on, baby. You can do it. There it is. All right, I got it out with one cut. Line those back up. I think that's going to be a pretty good mold. You can see there's a seam there that I cut. It sealed up nicely. It is easier to work with this stuff when it's cold, right out of the refrigerator, I find. And uh, then when you pour it, I like to bring these back up to room temperature. So I'm actually going to leave it sit here for a little while and get back to it to fill it, which, of course, I'll videotape that. But that's how you cut them open. You know, as you can see, my, my die is undamaged from the, from the resin, which is good because my wife will kill me if I ruin her favorite Yahtzee game. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the rest of these off camera, um, the same as I just did this one, and then we'll get back and pour. So we'll see you in uh, a couple seconds here. So I've successfully taken uh, four of the dice out of the molds. The fifth one, this one right here, actually did not mold correctly. It's all the way on the bottom of the cup. I won't be able to use that, which is another thing I like about the reusable molding. It's no big loss. I just remelt this and make another mold if I wanted to. You see, it just, I had the hot glue on the bottom. Oh, there it is. I had the hot glue on the bottom of the uh, cup with the straw. Well, my, my straw actually fell over and the, di the dice, the die ended up uh, resting on the bottom of the cup. Now, I can't make a mold out of that. So this is wasted. Sort of. Because I can take, the, I will take this, uh, see, that's what I got. I can make a three-sided die. Um, I could take this and remold it or melt this down again and remold it with, with the reusable molded compound that I'm using. So it's really no big loss. I'm not going to do that because I'm just doing this as an experiment. So right now we're at four out of five. I'll just set this one aside. Now, this is our clear one or the one that I've had in the clear cup when I molded it. I'm sorry, I call it our, I'm going to call it our test die. So our test die is um, I wrapped it in masking tape when i closed it back up I, I wanted to videotape that but i did but i didn't get to it it's real simple you just take standard masking tape go around it very gently don't squeeze too hard if you don't have masking tapes a lot of people like to use rubber bands uh you can use rubber bands if you want you just want to make sure they're not too tight because if they're too tight what they'll do is they'll actually squeeze in and your your mold your casting could become deformed so that's why i prefer using this the masking tape plus it's a dollar a roll so it's really inexpensive and a lot of times the gum bands here in pennsylvania we call them gum bands in case you're wondering i let that slip they're called we a lot of people call them gum bands up here but the rubber bands tend to uh if they get resin on it they tend to just get ruined and then you can't reuse them anyway so masking tape is always trustworthy uh we're going to go ahead and fill these now and uh i'm going to get some clear resins uh ready and set up and i'll be right back i think we're going to use a little tinting powder today try to make it little fancy rather than just having the super clear uh super clear dice i'm gonna put a little tint to it so i gotta pick a color and uh here it comes so i think we're about ready to uh mix and pour our resin today i'm using amazing clear cast made by aluminite i don't know maybe this will work better it's an amazing clear cast by aluminite which it's been hard to find lately but i managed to get a hold of a couple bottles this is my favorite to use the aluminite brand i don't get paid by them and just trying to let you know what works really well for me so don't worry it's empty we got um now i'm not sure how i'm never sure how much resin to mix or to pour for my molds that i'm working on so today I just poured out about an ounce and a half A and B. I haven't mixed them yet, so I have time. To, well, I do have time to talk because the clear resin lasts longer. I always have a, a, um, some kind of a extra mold sitting around for excess resin. I don't like to just throw it away. Uh, here's one I've been working on with white resin. It's a little plaque. It, uh, it's not quite full yet, but I put a little extra in there, put a little extra in there, and you can mix them if you have to put clear on top of it. I could do that too. But then next thing you know, you, you know, if you fill up a big mold, it's a good way. If you know you're going to do a lot of pouring, you don't want to waste. Find a big mold to just start. So with that said, get your safety gloves on. Make sure you have ventilation. I've got an exhaust fan in that room there. When I open the door, there's actually a nice little breeze blowing through here, right out there. Because uh, so these fumes can be dangerous to some people. Uh, it's never bothered me, but, you know, other people are different. And the last thing I want is for someone to get into this hobby and hurt themselves or get sick. So let's be safe out there, guys. So here we go. Now, I decided I want to 
use a gold mica powder. This doesn't have any brand on it. And it doesn't even have to say what color it is. But I think it's gold. It's either gold or some kind of green. I'm a little colorblind. So I'm going to set that there. I like to take my B side and pour it in first into my mixing cup. So there's my B side. This stuff's a little thicker. You want to make sure you get a, get a clean popsicle stick or whatever you're choosing to use. Scrape the insides of your vessel. In this case, this is a disposable plastic shot glass. You can get those at the dollar store for a buck for about a dozen of them. For me, they work really well. And you can reuse them as, as long as you don't mix the resins A and B. You know, keep this, this is going to be my B side, so I'm going to keep this next to my B bottle right there, which is a little off camera. Okay, now, now that's just the B side. We're going to use some mica powder today, and this is gold. And I kind of hope it comes out neat, because if it does, I have a couple ideas for it. Plus, I have a ton of it. Now, the thing about mica powder, you see, I got a clean popsicle stick here to dig out some powder to color my thing. I don't know if you can see on the tip of that, just that tip, that little bit, that might even be a little much. That's all you need for what we're working on. A little of this goes a long, long way. And I'm going to try to just put half of this in there. It's kind of sticking. It's a little humid today, so you'll find this stuff likes to stick to your stick. So I put about half of that that I just showed you in there. I'm going to set that aside. And I mix it into the B side. Mix, 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 mix. And you can see that's turning a, okay, I got to do it better than that. Now, I just want to put a tint on these dice. I don't want them to come out solid gold. Just a hint of the gold. So they'll still be clear whenever they come out. And that's what, that's what I come up with mixed in with my B side, B side only. Now I'm going to add my A side. Now the A side is a little thicker. I want to grab another clean popsicle stick because I want to save this shot glass. Like I said, this is all about doing this inexpensively and efficiently, but you still want to have good results. And that's what I'm hoping to get on these dice. So now this is a lot thicker than the, than the B side. That's why I mixed it with the B side first. I'm going to scrape it out real good with my stick. Do -do 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 -do. Another reason I like to wear gloves, you get this on your fingers. It's, it irritates my hand sometimes. So, and these gloves are cheap. You can get them anywhere. Uh, if, you, if you don't want to go to a pharmacy, if you go to the auto department at Walmart, they have black ones that are a couple dozen pretty, you know, I forget the price. I have some of those too. They work about the same. So there, I got all my stuff in there. I'm going to squeegee the stick on the side of my glass because you don't want to lose anything. That can go in the garbage. And we stir, stir, stir. You do want to try to stir this gently. Because I have that mica powder in there, I'm, I'm going to have to go a little more vigorously, which will put air bubbles in your resin, and you don't want that. But the next step I'm going to show you will help with this in addition to the pressure pot that we're going to use. Do, 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 do. See, that's mixing really, really well. That's good. I think I'm okay with the gold. I think. I don't know. We're, all, we're testing. We're just going to let it go. This is hot water from the tap, just regular hot tap water. Run your water till it gets hot, about a cup and a half in here. I chose this cup because when I set this, I'm going to set this in here. And what that'll do, that'll bring that resin up in temperature a little bit, and it'll actually make it thinner in viscosity, so it'll pour easier for you. But you don't want, you don't want your water boiling or too hot. Just hot tap water works perfect for this. I'm going to set it in there. Now, this is why I chose this cup, because my other cup won't tip over in it, so I won't be getting water to my resin. I'm going to leave us here for two minutes, and I'll be right back, and then we're going to pour. Okay, it's been sitting there for about two minutes. Um, what you're going to do, is try not to yell into the microphone, is get yourself a rag. I usually keep paper towels down here, but unfortunately I ran out. So, But this shop rag is going to work just fine. I stole fair and square from where I used to work. And... Uh, Pick it straight up and then dry the bottom off like this. It's very important you don't get any water into your resin or into your mold for that matter. Dry it off as best you can and that's good. And we'll set this hot water aside. We don't need it anymore. And as you can see, 
Eh, there we are. Um, it's There's hardly any air bubbles in it right now. I don't want to stir it anymore. Let me get my fat hand out of the way. There's hardly any air bubbles that you can see. They're still there, but there's hardly any that you can see right now. And that's what we're shooting for. That not only heats up your resin to make it easier to pour, but it'll take a lot of the air bubbles out. So now I'm going to pour one. This is that test one we did with the head member had the clear the clear cup around it now i can see why these are hard to pour because of the shape of them which is why they have to be up and down like 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 if you were going to spin them you know you want to keep it up on its edge so all the air comes back up that's why we left that reservoir in the top with the straw and like i said this is my first attempt at this and i've talked to different people and they've all had the same problem so we're gonna do the best we can and see what happens but I'm going to pour a little bit in there. I'm not going to fill it just yet. I'm going to tap it. And what I'm doing is I want to make sure there's no bubble at the very, very bottom. And then I'm going to gently spin it. Because what I want to do is the resin that's in there, I want it to coat the inside of my mold. That'll ensure I have smooth edges, smooth sides, whatever. Um, if there's any little nook or cranny in there that, that the resin has to get into, now's the time I can twist it around. I can actually go full sideways on this one. And then I'll refill it the rest of the way up. Some people stick a funnel in that little hole. My hands are steady enough I don't. All right, it has filled up. I, I overfilled it on purpose. You see there's a bead of that stuff on there. Now I'm going to squeeze it. Just got an air bubble out there if you could see it. And you can see it actually took the extra I put in there. I'm going to give it another little spin like this. Make sure I get those edges. And I'm going to top it off. This Illuminite clear, amazing clear cast has a 45 minute pot life. So I can sit here and take my time for 45 minutes before it starts thickening a little where it's to the point where I can't use. Unlike the 10 minute white resin, which you really got to hurry with that. And it's just leaves so much open to make mistakes. This stuff might take longer, but I think it's going to look better when we're done. That's why I chose to do it in clear instead of white. Plus, if we'd have done it in white resin, this here would have cost about $15 to throw away. The one we messed up. And I don't know about you, but I can't afford to throw $15 in the garbage can. So there's one. I'm going to do the other three and then we'll put them in our pressure pot and see what happens. Okay, as you can see, one, two, three, four are done. I'm dumping out my excess into this mold uh, before because it took me a little longer than I thought it would. This last one here, I had a little bit of a problem with, and I wish I would have videotaped, but I was too busy concentrating trying to fix it. My uh, pour hole would go down, and there's just a little bit at the bottom, a little bit of room for the resin to actually get into my mold the dye the dye i'm trying to make so um it wouldn't it was too thick and it wouldn't go in so i used another technique that i've learned is i uh scraped the resin off the top because it was all over the top i got all over my glove that's what took the glove off and then i put another glove on and i squeezed it from the sides I just pushed it in i added some resin and i gently let it go and the mold would suck the resin down in to the mold let it sit for a second tapped it like I showed you, squeezed it again, poured some resin, let it go as the resin was pouring, got those air bubbles out. I had to do it four or five times. Um, quite a pain in the ass. So this one I'm questioning if it's going to come out decent or not. Well, guess we'll find out tomorrow. But now we're going to throw them in the front pressure pot and I'm going to let them sit overnight. Uh, I'm not going to show that on this video because if you want to see how to use my resin pressure pot, you can check out the other one just to make this video a little, little shorter. I mean, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've seen my other videos, so most of them or some of them, whatever. But uh, check it out if you really want to know how to use a pressure pot, because at this point, I'm going to put these in a pressure pot. They're going to sit overnight, and I'll be seeing you tomorrow morning, which will be in, in your world right now about 30 seconds from now. Uh, that's about all I had to say for right now. Uh, let's hit the pressure pot and see what we got. And we're back. It is the next day. It's about 5 to 1 in the afternoon, so... I got the pressure pot here. I already cracked it open to save time for the video. So we're going to see how these came out. I'm a little excited about it. Um, as you can see, they're in 
bottom of the pressure pump like they're still stuck to the ground. Looks like we had a little leakage here in this one. That happens. Um, this is interesting. Can you see that on camera? Da, 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 da. I need something white behind it. I want to show you something. Just with the tinting we use. We use that gold tinting. Here's a white piece of paper. Can you see the difference? No, I guess you can't. Well, this is a piece of scrap clear. And this is the gold we used. And, and I guess, as usual, my camera doesn't want to pick it up. But uh, it's got these little flecks all floating through, which I think is kind of a neat effect. But that's not why we're here. We want to see how these puppies came out. Looks like this one had a lot of leakage. That's what this is attached to. So, let's bust it open. Get rid of the extra here. My hands are shaking because, like, I'm I'm kind of excited. I've never done dice before, and this is kind of new. So I want to see how they came out. And I'm gonna be a little rough with this mold because I don't plan on using it twice. Another piece of scrap. That's that reservoir I told you I like to put extra on top because when that's still wet, if there is air that sneaks out when you're not paying attention, this extra for a while will drip will go down in there to replace the air so you don't have air bubbles. So all right, here's the moment of truth. We're gonna crack it open. Crack it open. Oh, there she is. There she is. See, it's got a nice gold tint to it. Oh, wow. Um, haven't finished it yet, so I'm not going to get all excited. That's one. We're trying to make, we tried originally to make five. And uh, remember, we had, take these other three out. We had some issues with the one mold where it let go, so we got down to four molds. And I'm going to try and get these ones open. That was the one I was worried about because it looked like it had leaked. This one next here. Oh, there we go. Same thing. Nice gold tone to it. Number three. Yes, I told you I'd be doing this in real time because you're going to get to see my screw-ups, too. Uh, it's probably sitting there saying, come on, old man, get your butt moving. I don't have all day, or you probably skipped ahead by now. Honestly, if you're still here, thank you. I appreciate it. A lot of people like to skip through these videos just to see the end result, but then you miss the little thing. See, I left the reservoir on top of that one. But there's number three, and number four is right here. I wish we was getting five out of this. I'd like to give my wife, she loves Yahtzee. I'd like to give her my, my own set of dice that we're going to make when we finish this. There's number four. Looks like we did okay um, so far. Like I said, we're not done yet. We have to shave off this piece here. Now, one thing I learned, you might want to take a pair of nippers and cut those with, uh, you know, the, the, of course, I didn't set out my tools. Don't do it. I'll tell you why. I've had so much bad luck cutting with the uh, wire cutters, or I call them nippers. Uh, I've had so much bad luck cutting clear resin with it. It it sends a shock wave through the rest of the resin, and if there's any faults at all, you're cracking it right down the middle. So we're going to actually cut that with a Dremel tool, which I do not have set up right now. So uh, let me pause this, and we'll get, get it set up. You won't know the difference. So I got my Dremel tool all ready now. Sorry about that. Um, I want to demonstrate to you what happens if you use, this is what I, these are my nippers. I want to show you what can happen. I found that scrap piece we had. Hopefully it'll do it. A lot of times if you go to cut this stuff with nippers, now look, I'm only taking a little bit off the, the end and I'm going to squeeze it to get it to cut. And there, did you see what happened? I was only trying to cut this much, but it actually split the rest of it here and shot it across the room. And it can be dangerous, but you see that actually sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't work. But there, it did it again. That's why I won't use the nippers to cut those uh, those uh, pouring hole spouts off. We're going to use just the old Dremel tool with a saw blade on it. And uh, make sure you have your safety glasses on when you do this. We're going to go right to the edge as close as we can. I want to keep in mind that I do want to trim that down. Let me turn this down. I don't know if you can hear me over this or not. I want to go right across this edge here. See if you can see me better. 
right across this edge here, keeping this straight line. So I'm going to go this way. I want to be, be sure that I leave enough meat on there to form this corner here. Or the corner here, that's, I want, you know, the corner of the die. If I would cut it just like that, straight down, it would remove it and I wouldn't have enough meat to make a corner on it. You got to have the corner on your die. So, let's see what we can do with that. So I got, the, I got the one side. I go around and form this corner now very carefully. I turned it. Stand straight. And the final side. It'll be three cuts. And I did get a little close here where the one is. But I think I can fix that. So now you can see it's starting to form its shape. Let's get these out here. We're going to do one. I'll do the rest off camera because it'll take way too long. So you can see it's starting to get the shape. Here's where we cut. Um, I'm going to take uh, switch tips here. We're pausing before we switch tips. So I have switch tips. And as you can see, now I have on a fine sanding stone. Uh, this is not sandpaper. It's very, very fine. If you can see, if my... If my no, 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 it won't focus, of course. Well, it's a very fine sanding stone. You can see this has been used. It's, it's my favorite. Uh, some people are tempted to use this. This is a grinding wheel. Um, if you're really highly skilled, you could probably use it. I prefer to use this one because it's finer, especially on small things. So I'm going to find my corner, turn my tool on, and I don't know if you can hear me over this or not, but we're going to grind just like this just enough to take that off and make a nice corner and you want it to be even and it doesn't take much doesn't take much pressure this is coming out rather nicely considering I'm doing it in a hurry and on camera but as you can see here's my corner right there now you see, but Bruce, there's all kind of scratch marks on it. Don't worry about those. We'll take care of it. Oh, I just noticed in this dice, this die, there is a mark. And I don't have a pointer. I am not prepared today. <laughs> all right, there's a mark right there. It's actually inside the dice. What that is, is apparently I let a piece of dirt get in the resin before I poured it. Because that's actually on the inside, so it's not from the mold. It's from my own stupidity. There's nothing I can do about that, so that's just going to add a little character to the die. But uh, I'm going to go and do the other three, and I'd rather do it outside because this does throw a lot of dust. So I'm going to do the other three outside. I'll be back, and then we'll take the next step. So I ground them all down with the Dremel tool. tool. Here we go, all four of them. Now, as I'm looking at these, I'm going to point out a mistake that I made and should have known better. But uh, first time, not going to worry about it. I, probably if I hadn't pointed out, you're never going to notice. These two come out pretty good. They're nice and square for the most part. Um, these two, however, if you can look, they're kind of twisted. They're not perfectly square. Now, why that happened is the tape that I used and put around the mold... I put it a little bit too tight and it distorted the mold. That, uh, yeah, yeah, distorted the mold. Um, it does happen. Uh, I think I was even talking about where you can use tape or rubber bands. This is exactly why I won't use rubber bands because sometimes they get too tight. Uh, these would still be usable if you're just playing a regular game. Um, but as you can see, they're, I don't know what to call them, oblong or twisted. They're more of a trapezoid type thing. Just a hair off. And... If you would make these to sell them to somebody, they're definitely going to notice. Uh, I'm not going to make these to sell. We're just doing this uh, because a couple people requested how to do dice, and I figured I'd take a shot at it. Um, I'm still okay with it. I wish I had the fifth one because it would still be a good Yahtzee game for here at the house. Um, now, people are, people are going to ask, well, why would I want to make dice? I can just go to the dollar store and pay a dollar and get a set. You're right, but these aren't 
really for standard dice. The, uh, why I'm trying to do this and the requests from the people I've had, they play things like Dungeons and Dragons, which have the weird shaped dice. And some people want custom dice for that. They're, you know, they're really into it. And I, and I get that. I totally get that. But I don't have any Dungeons and Dragons dice around here. I um, never got into that. Um, nothing wrong with it. It's just not my thing. So I figured we'd try to make the, the regular dice. Now, these aren't done yet. I'm still going to treat them. And the next clip's going to be the final product. And uh, then we're going to get out of here. Like I said, any questions, leave them down there in the comments. Uh, okay, well, let's get these finished and see what we got. So, um, yeah, I I'm laughing at myself. I'm not much of a painter, especially for little teeny tiny things like that. So I did one and I used this paint marker that you can get at Walmart. Uh, the fine tip black and um, yeah I'm not going to paint the rest of them I'm going to go straight to clear coat which as soon as this black dries I'm going to clear coat all four of them and show you what, what we got I'm not going to do it if you guys hopefully you guys are better painters than I am but uh, I suck at it so like I said I'm going to show you my mistakes too I'm just not going to sit here and color all these dots and I know they're going to come out like that so maybe the ones that are, don't have the dots on it will be clear we'll see Okay, we're back again. Um, what I did was, and I forgot to do this on camera. I wish I would have. Um, but it, very simple. All I did was take a can of uh, semi-gloss clear coat and sprayed them, let them dry, flipped them, sprayed the underside. And uh, you can, it's uh, what I use is Rust-Oleum 2X. I uh, left the can back in the shop. I didn't spray it out here. Uh, you can get it at any Walmart uh, hardware store. Just a standard, standard clear coat. Um, I use Rust-Oleum 2X semi-gloss clear coat and uh, as you can see I don't know if it's showing up on camera like I said my camera's not the best but it is they did come out very nice They're, they come out super clear um, with the exception of the gold flex you can see in it unfortunately and I know this is showing up on camera the gold flex are giving it this yellow color that makes them look aged now if that's what you're going for that's great but if you know if you don't if you don't if you don't clear coat basic clear resin it will turn yellow and it turns to about this color but looking at it closely this has gold flecks all through it and it is clear but it's giving the appearance on camera that it's yellowed uh as in aged um i'm if i had it to do over again i would have picked a different color or i would have just left them clear which is probably what i should have done in the first place considering this is my first attempt at this but now you see the one with the dots on it it's 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 popping pretty good with the with the with the clear coat and uh even the dots I put on there, because I'm, I'm not very good, my, very much of a painter, um, obviously. <laughs> um, I think what I might do, my wife has a much steadier, steadier hand than I am. I think I'm going to have my wife color in the rest of them, which you can still put the dots in on top of the clear coat. It won't hurt nothing. But overall, I'm satisfied. I hope this helps somebody. I uh, don't think, well, let's go over what we, uh, I'll, you know, I'll do it in the outro. Uh, when I'm going to write down everything that I messed up and everything I did right. And hopefully we all learned something today. So let's go to the outro. Okay, let's talk about what I could have done better and what actually worked. Uh, starting from the beginning, uh, the molds that I made, I'm, I'm happy with them. Uh, they had to, if all the pouring spouts worked, except for the one that fell over, which that does happen, which is why I like the reusable molding molding compound because I can uh, start over if I want to and I, I probably will since these molds are still good I probably will make one more so I get my five and uh, I'm not gonna do it today though so that's one thing I, I, I would have uh, the molds were, were good I was happy with the way I made the molds uh, putting the molds together and filling them I wish I wouldn't have used the gold mica powder they would have come out crystal clear because like I said, they, they do look yellowed, as I just showed you. And that's not what I was going for, because I see I see clear mold and it's yellowed. It, it tells me it's just old. It was exposed to too much sunlight and it wasn't properly clear coated. Uh, so I would have changed it to maybe a red or a blue or even a silver. But don't I wouldn't use the gold that I used. Uh, let's see, what else do I have about it? Oh, when I put the molds together and I, I filled them, I made on two of them, I wrapped it too tight with masking tape. Uh, like I said, I was a little excited to do this job and with my anxiety and everything like that, it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, I didn't think they were going to come out perfect. They weren't supposed to. That's how we learn. 
but I wrapped them too tight with the uh, masking tape, so two of them come out kind of trapezoidal, which I'm sure you're not going to want that if you're doing the Dungeons and Dragons dice because they have a lot more uh, surfaces on them. So that's something I did wrong that I would have, if I go back, I would have loosened them. I still would have used the masking tape, though. The rubber bands uh, don't, I don't get the effect that I like. They, they kind of squeeze even, I only squeeze the one section, whereas masking tape gives a nice even hold together. So yeah, I put those together. That's something I did wrong. I put the uh, masking tape on too tight on two of the molds. Uh, no problems with the pressure pot. Pressure pot worked good. Uh, I wish I had a better camera. I could show you how clear they actually did come out because you could see the gold flecks in it. There were no air bubbles in any of them, which I was very surprised about that. But I guess that was the design of the mold and and uh, tapping it like I showed you. So I was happy with that. Uh, my trimming technique, that's that's what I thought up of. Um, I'm this, this Dremel tool... If you don't have one, this one is only eighteen dollars at Walmart. It's it's a I, I'm not gonna say the brand, but it's it's not a Dremel tool. Those things are expensive. They work great. They work great if you want to buy one. Hey, go for it. But the whole object of me doing any of these videos is how to try and do it efficiently and spend the least amount of money to get what you want. But this Dremel tool is great and has different tips that come with it. And as you can see, we used uh, the saw blade and we used uh, the fine tip sandstone. To get the results we wanted to get that corner shaped and all four of those came out well so i'm happy with that um, um as you saw my painting skills to put the dots on are not up to par so i stopped i'm seriously gonna let my wife do that she's better at it than i am but clear coating it i used the rust-oleum 2x uh semi-gloss clear coat just a fine coating on it it'll make the uh, clear coat la it'll make the clear resin your pr it'll make your product last longer without turning yellow if you don't put anything on at all, it's not going to be as glossy, and eventually it's going to turn yellow. It's a known fact that clear coat will turn yellow if you don't put uh, something on there. Uh, there is UV resistant coating you can get. Once again, you're spending more money, but I have found that the, the Rust-Oleum 2X semi-gloss, I think it has the UV built into it because I've got stuff been sitting around over three years that's never, never, yell never yellowed. So, uh, see what else we got. That was That's about it. Um, that's my take on doing dice. I hope you learned from my mistakes. Uh, maybe I taught you something you didn't know. Uh, please like, share, comment. Uh, if you have anything constructive to say, please leave it in the comments. Uh, insults will be deleted. Apparently some, some troll likes to insult my appearance and my video quality. and It's not really productive, and I don't see them running a video channel. I do this for fun. Uh, there is no Patreon. There is no donation place. All I ask is like, share, comment. And enjoy the art form, the craft, whatever you want to call it. And uh, that's all I had to say. I think I covered everything I wanted to. Any questions, leave them in the comments, and I will get to them as soon as I can. I'm not sure what my next project's going to be, but I'll come up with something. So, till next time, guys.